Or actually fell right on top of me, which I was happy about. You know, it's just uh, making sure she was okay. Tonight on Q2, devastation on the deck. You just heard people immediately after you kind of heard the initial crash. You heard people screaming and crying. Dozens come tumbling to the ground after a deck collapse at a local golf club. That sending nearly 50 people to the hospital and an entire county response. Uh, everybody did phenomenal. Really made, you know, like I said, what is chaos, pretty organized and calm. Tonight we'll hear from one of those people who was sent sprawling and injured the moment it all happened. You know, it was just shock, I think, and we, um, like I said, I was more just concerned for my wife. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Jackie Coffin. It was a scene that many would never like to relive in Billings. This picture here representing the first minutes after the deck collapsed at Briarwood Golf Course. Dozens of people fell more than 10 feet to the ground, leading to a massive response from not only the city, but all of Yellowstone County. Miraculously, no one died, but almost 50 people were injured with many broken bones and head injuries. We do have team coverage of this disaster tonight, and we'll start at the golf course with Alina Howder, hearing from one man caught in the collapse. The scene here at Briarwood Country Club is much quieter than it was Saturday night after this back deck collapsed, injuring dozens of people. And those who are there are thankful everyone made it out alive, saying it could have been much worse. We heard this cracking sound, kind of the worst sound I've heard in a long time, and... I look over to my sister and I'm like, we got to get out of this deck and it just happened. Jordan Hennessy was one of the almost 50 people who ended up at a Billings hospital Saturday night after this deck collapsed at Briarwood Country Club. He still isn't sure if he was conscious when he hit the ground. I don't remember much other than the table came down and hit me <laughs> in the head. It bounced my head off the pavement a little bit over here, but and then, yeah, just everybody around me was just... Yeah, it was a scene. A chaotic scene as more than 300 people were at the club for the Tangle Derby, Briarwood's biggest tournament of the year. Esther Jensen was inside and watched the aftermath from the window. You can see a couple hanging onto the railing in this photo with dozens of victims on the ground below. We rushed to the window and we just saw everyone on the ground. You know, bleeding, everything was just right there. Thankfully, no one was underneath the deck when it collapsed. It's too soon to tell what caused it to happen. There wasn't any negligence negligence on Briarwood at all. It was just, uh, I, I truly believe it was just a freak accident and we just have to deal with it. General Manager Scott Pekovich says the country club will be closed for a couple of days to assess the situation. At least part of the deck was replaced just a few years ago. The undercarriage of the deck has not been replaced recently. Is What has been replaced? was the top Trex decking, uh, the, the actual cover or the floor of the deck. But unfortunately for Jordan, he won't be golfing anytime soon. I got x-rays on my ankle, my leg, and then elbow, kind of collarbone area. Just cause I landed right on my left side, just came down. Though he's still in pain from the over 10-foot fall, he feels like he was actually in the right place at the right time. My sister actually fell right on top of me, which I was happy about. You know, it's just uh, making sure she was okay. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Just 30 minutes after the disaster at the Briarwood Country Club, patients began arriving at both Billings hospitals. The estimated number is nearly 50 that were injured in the incident, but fortunately, both hospitals say they were up to the task. Like, it was just brutal, like, and it was just kind of chaos. Michael Garcia never expected to be spending his Sunday here in a hospital bed at Billings Clinic. But what was a fun weekend golfing turned into pure chaos in the blink of an eye. I heard something. Um, it sounded like breaking wood. And then we were on the ground. Garcia was one of the dozens standing on this deck at the Briarwood Country Club Saturday evening when it collapsed. I tried to get up and I couldn't move. So then I just laid back down and it was wild. It uh, you know, when you're on the ground, I was more concerned just about my wife and a lot of my friends that are just right there hurt. It's a scene first responders say was a mass casualty incident. Ambulance after ambulance began to arrive, rushing Garcia, his wife, and many others to Billings's two hospitals. These sort of things are always sort of organized chaos, but 
Uh, I mean, that's why we plan for them. That's why we drill this incessantly. Billings Clinic Trauma Director Michael Engelhart says the team here was ready, initiating emergency protocol to make sure patients were receiving proper care. That helps us triage who needs to go where first uh, and who the sickest ones are uh, so we can be ready. And it was a similar story at St. Vincent's Healthcare. Both hospitals called in staff and initiated protocols often practiced but rarely needed. It was stressful, but um, things got done quickly and there were some significant injuries that were triaged appropriately and, and got to where they needed to be pretty quickly. Garcia ended up with a broken pelvis and tailbone and is prepping for surgery on Monday. Despite that, he's still grateful that this scary situation wasn't worse. Just concerned, you know, just that he said I just fell 12 feet, 14 feet with 40 of my friends, you know, and it just seemed like everybody was, everything just ran really smoothly and I think that's huge. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. As we said, this incident led to all of Yellowstone County emergency services responding, including 12 Billings police patrol units, 11 AMR units, two Laurel ambulances, and two help flight ground units. As far as Briarwood Country Club, that has been a Billings staple since 1984. And once again, the portion of the deck that collapsed was partially redone around three years ago as the floors were replaced. Briarwood will remain closed through Tuesday with officials reevaluating evaluating at that point. Now to the weather scene where the heat was on high today and it looks to stay that way for a while. With the latest on these climbing temperatures, here's Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Well, the temperature just kept climbing today. You can see some of the smoke and haze that was around in addition with the Stockman Bank weather cam 96, the warmest we've seen so far at 66 for the coolest so far. And you can see that, that compares much warmer than average. And keep in mind, these are the warmest daytime highs and overnight lows that we see during the entire year, 89 and 61. So a hot afternoon led to a heat advisory. That'll continue heading into tomorrow. And in addition to the heat advisory, try to keep yourself cool and safe. We're also looking at fire weather conditions in areas of northeastern Montana. How long will the heat last? And there's some thunderstorms in the mix as well. We'll talk about all of it with a complete forecast in a few minutes. We're learning tonight of a fatal bear attack in the West Yellowstone area. Fish, Wildlife and Parks says a woman was found dead in the Buttermilk Creek area of the Custer Gallatin National Forest, about eight miles west of West Yellowstone, and there were grizzly tracks around her. FWP has closed off a large portion of that area for the f of the forest for human safety. The name of the woman has not yet been released, and FWP has not yet detailed how they will manage the bear. A Montana rail link bridge is back open to rail traffic after it collapsed into the Yellowstone River nearly one month ago. MTN's Haley Monaco has been following the derailment since day one and takes us back to see the changes 28 days later. It's a completely different scene here at this Stillwater County train derailment site than it was just last month as construction has finished ahead of schedule and train traffic has resumed. They had to think fast and move fast and get the uh, bridge building crews out really fast. And fast may be the perfect way to describe it. Just 28 days after a train derailed and a bridge collapsed into the Yellowstone River near Reed Point, construction on the bridge completed. Drove by it a couple of days ago when I said, me and my son, and I said, that's going to take them another couple of weeks at least. And the next day it's open. Elmer Lloyd has lived in Reed Point for over 20 years and says after Saturday's reopening of the tracks and hearing trains running through his small town, things feel normal again. It's good to have the train going back and forth again, knowing that business is back in the business. According to Montana Railing spokesperson Andy Garland, the first train crossed over the new tracks around 1130 Saturday morning and also says, quote, as normal train traffic resumes, crews and contractors will remain on site to remove all equipment and material utilized throughout the process and continuing to restore the area. MRL remains committed to addressing any impacts to the area as a result of this incident. There's people from all over North America really focused on Montana Rail Link. Paul O'Neill lives in Canada but has family from Montana and has always loved trains and he's one of those people focused on MRL in their last year of business. Watching what happened or seeing what happened, 
you know, affected a lot of people that had plans to come out and see the Montana Rail Link because, well, you can't run trains when there's a bridge out. The fact that they got this bridge built so quickly is pretty amazing. That's a thought that's been echoed by many. No idea it would take that quick for them to fix that railroad bridge. In Stillwater County, Haley Monaco, MTN News. The old IGA building on State Avenue has new life. The building was bustling during the grand opening of the new Makers Market. Customers got to peruse products from about 3,000 makers across Montana. Two years in the making, it was started by Billings resident Victoria Eichel in an effort to create a one-stop shop for Montana makers. And I think it just feels good. People like to shop here because they know it's making an impact. The makers make 100% of their sales, so it makes a difference in their lives. I would prefer buying from local artists than going to a big box store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it means more. Well, and I feel like the gifts are personalized. Like they, yeah. They're putting blood, sweat, and tears into these things, and I love buying stuff like that because I don't have the skill to do so. The Maker's Market will also be offering a variety of classes in the future for its customers, and they open it tomorrow at 10. So you can check out all of the Montana-made products they have to offer. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, fall volleyball will be here before we know it, and some Montanans are spending the summer getting ready. How they're doing that across the country after the break. Download.